We're going to head down under where the payments landscape in Australia is continuing to evolve and keep up with the digital demands of customers, but at the same time looking to build on the evolution of for real time payments. Fraud and scam monitoring is a big focus as banks and the government seek to better detect fraud before money is released. And with an eye on the future, work is underway on, uh, on appropriate use cases for central bank digital currencies. So for more, we're joined now by Nish Daramantine, who's the head of Global Transaction Service Products at Australia's Westpac. Hi, Nish. Thanks so much for taking the time to be with us. Thank you for having me. So let's talk a little bit about what's been happening in Australia uh, over the past couple of years when it comes to payments, because it feels like it's been a busy year. Absolutely. Um, I feel like the payment landscape is changing so at a, the speed of the light, unimaginable uh, the changes that we are expecting to the future. A um, couple of important things to um, share with you. The Australian uh, system already had a very mature payment system across, um, across the economy. Um, we will look at ourselves around three major supporting clearing uh, systems that we supported the banks, institutions and companies. We had a very solid, mature, real-time gross settlement system for high-value payments and also for um, a very robust, low-value clearing stream supported by a very specific bill payment system for people who are paying with invoices. Um, so we're coming from a very mature, developed market. Um, what we're looking at now, um, and we've taken a very bold step in the last two years to combine and consolidate three of the clearing streams. We included um, the real-time payment system, which is called NPPA, and the bill payment system, as well as a card-based uh, platform together. So that roadmap is just at the beginning of its journey and growing really, really well. Mm. The second most important thing that's happening is the government has ver set very clear direction for us to look into a payment system that's going to be a world-class, modern, bringing the innovation and support competition at the same time, very safe, trusted and resilient system to the future. Mm. So this is the first time we have seen the federal government releasing a strategic roadmap for payments in Australia. Coupled with that, um, there's also expected um, phasing out of checks in uh, 2030. So that's a seven year period from now and we're very excited to be part of that journey. Interesting. Now, uh, Australia is not alone in seeing an increase in uh, fraud and scams. Uh, you know, here in Canada, uh, you know, we get calls probably daily uh, from scam numbers. And uh, how is Australia looking at this and what actions are, are they taking as one of the leading banks? Uh, what actions are you taking as one of the leading banks? In Absolutely. Um, so it is a big problem. Um, the Australians put together had experienced over 3.1 billion of targeted scams. And uh, mind you, that's just the reported number and it keeps growing. Um, so it is a big challenge for the banks and other institutions as well who are really, really looking to combat um, um, fraud and scams. So the government again stepped in last year with their federal budget um, allocated about 86.5 million to combat um, scam related um, and fraud as well as being able to clear a special anti-scam centre. So the Australian uh, Competition and Consumer Authorities, the ACCA, has been establishing the anti-scam monitoring centre uh, from July this year onwards and what's really interesting is it's going to be a common utility that's going to help most of the um, institutions not only banks to be able to support each other share exchange and data around targeted scams so it'll build things like SMS alert capability it'll help um, to inform the banks if there is a scam therefore you could go ahead and potentially close accounts or freeze assets and so on at the same time supporting other institutions like particularly telecommunications uh, which has been targeted scams through uh, various SMSs and mobile uh, scams, will be able to help reduce the service or remove the service as well. Uh, where we are coming from Westpac perspective is we've launched a number of services. We have been working on this um, for the last couple of years. We've launched a service for fraud verifier, which means if you're making a payment and the name of the payment account and the beneficiary name doesn't match, we will provide you an alert. So that's going to be a really important um, feature for us. We've also built certain capabilities through our digital online banking channels to be able to help consumers to ask more questions. Are you really sure you want to make this payment? Because you probably have made the payment before. Mm -hmm. So things like that are really helping, but more to be done. 
Okay, let's uh, pivot a little bit and talk about collaboration. Have you intentionally increased the importance you place on uh, collaborating with peers within your market and globally to ensure that you're making the right investment choices for your customers and for the future? Absolutely. So this is really important because for us, um, the local collaboration is coming through. It, it, it has come to a natural point. So the Australian Payment Plus, as I mentioned, combines three main uh, payment schemes. That is going to be absolutely a collaborative effort and and a big investment roadmap for us. So that's really one area. The global collaboration is coming from two main um, work that we do. One, on the ISO that we hear, we are in SWIFT and CYBOS. We talk a lot about the ISO 20022 standard um, enhancement. So that's going to be part of the work that we're going to do around collaboration. The second part is going to be on central bank digital currencies and our roadmap to G20 uh, recommendations. So that's going to be all in encompassing a very um, busy, excited, at the same time delivering the right um, choices for our consumers and citizens. Let's talk about technology uh, because it's ever changing. Every year I'm sure you come to Cybos and, and talk about the new technologies that have emerged within the last 12 months. What role is technology playing in the evolution of payments in Australia? I think technology is absolutely pivotal, the most critical aspect of all things that we've experienced in the last few years. It started with the internet, but look, here we are, chat GPT and um, robots and AI. The number of changes that we are hearing at Cybos this year is just extraordinary amount of information about the technology, um, emerging technologies. So where's Australia on this? Um, so the Association of Bankers in Australia did a research and um, in 2005, banks put together, put 3.5 billion into investment into technology. By 2018, within 22 years, it's grown to 18 and a half billion. That's a staggering eight times increase in the investments. And it could, you could see that we are making right choices and all of that technology is going into front-end digital um, as well as, of course, replacing core banking systems, but at the same time, making it seamless, nimble, and flexible for the consumers. What it also means is, um, as we go through um, the changes we are doing on AI, the, the adoption of API, uh, potentially harmonization of APIs as well, and the message standards we are going to bring up, all of that put together is going to bring a very nice um, package for the future when it comes to consumer experience on payments. Let's talk about a major global issue, and that is climate change. And uh, Australia is a country that has seen the impacts of that firsthand, bushfires, droughts. So, uh, you know, uh, this ESG is a big topic here at Cyboss. How is your bank looking at ESG and sustainability from a financial perspective? Absolutely. I think I'm very pleasantly surprised to see Cyboss has taken a very uh, number of initiatives as well as looking at ESG as a really key topic. Uh, we are not very different in back in, back in uh, Australia. We We've looked at ESG for the last five years to be able to have our commitments around the climate changes and working through because we are a very resource-based um, country. We we export uh, minerals, we export iron, we export a number of other things that are very, very much nature driven. So for us, it's really, really important to protect the planet. So what do we do around climate changes is um, the bank has been working with a number of communities. And what it means for us is we build a couple of products that are very much emergency focused. So the last year bushfires or the previous year floods or the previous year bushfires, we've always been coming out with different products to support the citizens. So we have a digital card solution that's coming up, but at the moment, um, prepaid cards is a big um, part of the solution we offer during emergencies for um, various areas and we work with the governments in bringing that up. Uh, what we're also looking at is um, looking at ways to reduce plastic in our cards usage. So we've looked at um, and explored a 100% um, uh, recyclable plastic for our cards. Um, we recently had a program with, that we ran in, in Australia, New South Wales, um, a student program, a cards program for students, and it went with a bio, um, biodiversity driven, very much a, a nature friendly card uh, solution for customers. And of course, everything else digital is going to help the planet. Mm. Okay, let's talk. Let's come back to the topic of international payments. Do you think that uh, they can reach the targets that have been placed for G20 by 2027, or are there just too many challenges and barriers? I think um, my view is G20 is a very ambitious target, right? So if you really think about 2027, it's just four years from next year. So we are almost in um, 2024. So uh, the three-year to four-year timelines is going to be pretty challenging. Um, but the three areas that G20 roadmap is looking at, 
One is the market interoperability. Now, in terms of um, agreeing to service levels on cross-border, et cetera, some parts of it may be achievable, but there's clearly going to be some challenges in getting market infrastructure ready for this journey. Um, things like data exchanges, message standards, harmonization of APIs, some of them will come through. Uh, but I am a bit nervous about that, uh, to be able to get everything done in such a short time. Mm, and hopefully lots of conversations this week that maybe can help push that forward. Nish, uh, it's been such a pleasure chatting with you. Nish Damaratne is the Head of Global Transactions Services Product at Australia's Westpac. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm.